this ASH, um, with the exception of the Elevate TN data, which is the acalabrutinib frontline study, so that was Clermicil plus obinutuzumab versus acalabrutinib plus obinutuzumab versus acalabrutinib alone, which showed a significant advantage in progression-free survival for the two acalabrutinib-containing arms versus Clermicil obinutuzumab. That was probably the most practice-changing and most important thing in my mind to come out of ASH this year. We're seeing a lot of data following up from studies that we had heard before in more preliminary forms, you know, follow up on MD Anderson's Ibrutinib Venetoclax study, the initial look at the Captivate study, um, and the follow up on the ECOG 1912 study and the CLL14 trial. Um, so, all of those follow ups kind of confirmed what we had seen in the original report, which is great. So, with CLL14, um, our previous data, so that was um, Clarimicil plus obinutuzumab versus venetoclax plus obinutuzumab. And on both arms, it was 12 months of therapy. And previously, we had had follow up of a, a total of 24 months, so a year on treatment and a year off treatment. Now that's actually been extended to another year off treatment. And the pro progression free survival curves are still looking really good. So, I think we can be um, more comfortable choosing that regimen for our patients knowing that they're not going to likely progress very quickly, especially if they get a deep response. Um, then with ECOG 1912, that was a study comparing FCR to ibrutinib plus rituximab. Um, we got, again, another follow-up of another year on that study, again showing the trend towards or the significant advantage in both progression-free and overall survival with IR versus FCR.